What's up? Oh, I'm waiting. Hello, guys. What is up, Johnny and Brandon Knight? How art thou today on this fine... What day is it? Wednesday? Tuesday? Wednesday? I just remember it's 25. I believe it's Wednesday. Let me see. I don't know how to see. Can somebody tell me? I don't know if there's something to believe Hello, Ben. <laughs> Hello, cake. Welcome. <laughs> Hello, Sham. Jay. Hello, Gustavo. Dude, I, people are, like, scared to talk to me now because they think that I'm, like, so far gone. It's very unfortunate because I would love to, like, speak to people and hear their perspectives on things in life and, like, learn. And it's, I don't know, a lot of people are, like, very, and it's understandable as to why they may be scared to speak up to me. They think that I'm, like, some sort of ego, ego arrogant asshole now, which I, I do not believe I am. But if I am, I would love for people to speak up to me and, and tell me so. We played Smash two years ago. <laughs> Shamji. I would li listen. Like, the Sham part, for some reason, of, like, I could see myself playing Smash with a guy with some Shamness in his name. But it would be a lie if I was to tell you, like, oh, yeah, I remember you. Like, I don't. But, um, at the same time, can you really expect me to remember, like, some one <laughs> battle that I played smack? <laughs> it's kind of funny, we're like, Pearson, I played, like, that one game with you for 20 minutes on that one day seven years ago. Do you remember me? And I'm like, my friend, <laughs> I, wish I, I wish I had a memory that was that good, but I do not. Only one comment so far. I wonder if Instagram's censoring me. Hello, Namaj. You were relevant in my Discord server. That does sound kind of familiar then. Maybe I'd... Maybe I'd... Did, I, did you have a nickname? Maybe not. I, I don't want to lie. I, I cannot lie to you. What am I eating? I'm eating a sandwich with turkey, cheese, and mayonnaise. Meaning I'm not a robot. Because in Spongebob, those like robot guys wouldn't have... Man, it was Mayo Cloud. I remember Mayo Cloud. See, look at that. Yeah. What is up, Roy? Will I ever stream again? Streaming right now? Stream on Twitch? I believe so. I would say so. Um, still figuring, putting some things together in life. Is there a Discord right now? Nah, there ain't. There will have to be one. Guys, there's a lot to be done on this planet. And how privileged are we to be so young to be able to do things, to be able to make an impact for what is good? Outside of the beliefs of what is possible and also the beliefs of what is good. Because if we stand for what is good and do what is truly good, it cannot be denied. That's that's the great thing about true goodness. It's amazing. True and true love. It's very freeing. Why is nobody talking? Don't be a scared. Don't be scared to speak. I, I love to talk to you guys about your lives, about what's going on, about anything that can turn into any sort of conversation. I shall engage. I'm here to talk and listen. I would love to. I do not bite. I'm saying that as he bites a fucking sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> I do not bite. Bite sandwich. Enlighten us. What would you like to be enlightened on? Have I watched One Piece? I have not. 
Pearson, I want to become a Nintendo streamer, but I don't know where to start. What's my perspective on people with other religious beliefs as people who are Muslim or Roman Catholic? Okay, here we go. I believe right now, which beliefs are subject to change, of course, that most humans on this planet, including myself, largely including myself, we all have struggles and we all suffer. And some suffer more than others. We all struggle from something, right? You could argue that, that, that one thing that we suffer from is, you know, certain strict, strong religious texts and beliefs. And we may call, call those people bigoted, in which case you could say they could be bigoted. But, you know, they're kind of, in, from a mental standpoint, they're very withheld into those religious beliefs. Um, and the people that they're bigoted against are held in by the fact that they feel hatred towards those people that would be, could be called bigots. And now their hatred's going out, and there's, there's hatred there, there's pride. A lot of it is, is the bad emotions and feelings that we feel for ourselves and that we put out to others. What I've learned in my experience and what I'm learning, and this is something that, that, that is a lifelong journey to learn, right? There's no... There's no Life is, is an adventure and it's a lifelong journey. And I believe that the, the, the purpose of life is to be able to find peace within yourself, but also truly spread as much love and, and kindness and goodness out to others. And many people live in, we live in a society in which that's seen as uncool in certain aspects, especially for young men. I would love to be able to show that you can be masculine, but also kind and good and, and, and even have feminine qualities at the same time, but also like own up to like real masculinity, which is standing up for what's right. I personally believe that what is right is trying to help others in whatever way as I can. I think that that's something that's going to take a very long time. Um, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a journey. Uh, it's going to require the help of many other human beings. It is not something I, I, I am deluded to think that I could do alone. I think there will be times in my life where I will have to learn from other people and you know, serve other people that, 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 that can give me knowledge, people that are higher above than me. I think there are times where I'll have to teach and help people that are, that, um, that don't have certain knowledge and understanding that I may have. I, I seek to always learn from everybody that I can. And my truth in terms of the truth to life, um, I have, I have a very unique philosophical view where I've, I've dived into many philosophies and what they've all led me is they've led me to this, that Jesus Christ is the way to eternal life on this planet. Now, is there another way to eternal life? Um, well, all right, well, that, that, that sounds so cringe to say eternal. Jesus Christ is, let's say, the, the, the way to salvation, the way in which when you die, you move on to another, you, you, you know, you go to a better place. Um, but I'm still trying to figure out my thoughts on that exactly. It's not something I have completely figured out. I don't think I'll ever have it figured out. I don't expect to ever know all the answers to life. I know for myself, I've been shown that that's the truth. But I know for myself as well, I've been shown that it's very important not to let the dogma that the rest of many religions have trap me. Take what is good from them. Yet, seriously use new ideas to spread goodness and kindness in the modern era. I think that there's, a, I think the, the big issue with Christianity right now is many people who are Christian are boxed into a mold of how they have to be or behave as Christian. And I'm not saying you have to behave in a bad way. I'm saying the entire opposite. I'm saying Christianity holds people to a certain level of goodness. And there's like, this is what it's like to be a Christian. And this is the level of goodness you can be at that, that's possible. And I, I think it's possible to be at a way higher level of goodness that human beings are capable of so much more. And, and so what happens is people that are Christians that, that are raised in this level of goodness. You have, let's say, people that, that have a lot of goodness in their heart and they want to do more, but they're like, oh, well, I can't be a Christian because this is the level of goodness that Christians are are operating at. With that being said, I think so many, and this isn't just Christian, this is all humans. Again, I'm just rambling. I, I like want to like accept the ways of the modern era to like truly, at least for myself, do as much good as I possibly can, learn from different philosophies, the good and positive parts of different philosophies, whilst remaining a Christian, whilst learning all the good things about Christianity, not to judge others. That says into the Bible. I think that's beautiful. Um, with that being said, I, I question like, okay, are there times to judge others? Like I read that. I was like, Jesus Christ says, do not judge others. What if somebody is like going out and like murdering hundreds of people? Would I not be casting judgment on being like, hey, that guy should not do that? Like, it's, it's a serious problem. Like, like the, the truth is, you can, it is not possible to follow all the Bible. 
you know? And it's like, so we shouldn't be scared to recognize what we do need to follow in today's time in the Bible, the, the truly good things that we can all get behind and not feel like we have to be held down by the things that don't apply anymore. Because as it says so in the Bible, whoever believeth in me shall not perish, but have eternal life. So why are we holding ourselves back from trying to be a little bit more intellectual about how we look at the Bible when we know that so long as we do so with a good heart and love, and maybe we, we betray some of the things that... I can't even give examples because I've read parts of the Bible. I haven't read the whole Bible. And I've read parts of the Bible that I was like, oh my gosh, this is like literally like life huge wisdom that is like so factual. And I've read other parts like, yeah, I, I, I don't agree with that. But it's like we know that Christ is our salvation, that he will save us. If we can act in a way which relates both to the Bible and what is ne- what applies to today to the Bible, but then also look for ideals which apply today as well to love everybody realistically, then that's bog. Do I believe a numerous prophet before Jesus Christ in any other religion or just in Christianity? I believe that all the other, like the prophets that existed before Jesus, Jesus Christ were necessary people that had to exist to get to the point where Christ could come onto this earth. And they were entirely necessary. Yeah, that's, that's basically my answer there. But yeah, what do you guys think about what I just said? I would love to, I would love to discuss. Uh, some guy said, um, yawn, Rodrigo. Rodrigo, here's what I'd say to you, my friend. Instead of, you know, making a comment like that, instead of saying yawn, make an intellectual comment towards me. Like, hey, Harry, you're being a fucking idiot right now. You're being too idealistic. This is why I'm going to give you a reason. But if you're just going to say a, a yawn emoji, that shows me that you're not really thinking with your brain, in my opinion. That shows you're just, you have some preconceived notion as to what you think makes sense. And if it doesn't fall into it, you just yawn, but you're not going to think about it. Now, if you bring up something, a valid reason, and I'll have, a, I'll have a debate with you and we can discuss about it. And you may even change my mind. You may, I may even agree with you. But I don't think it's useful for anyone to just, to just have that yawn emoji. I think Jesus will come back. I don't know. I do not know. I do not know. Um, I, right now, I sway towards... Let me think. I don't understand what that means entirely. Do I think Chris Chan is Jesus? I do not. Do you affiliate with any Christian denomination or organization? I currently go to church with my family. Um, I, just, I, I consider myself to be a Christian, although an unorthodox, unconventional Christian. You th- I think we're in the end of times. Okay, I don't appreciate you saying you think we're in the end of times. Like saying, "Hey, Harry, you like I, I did. I tell you that I think we're in the end of time, Sean. I, I don't appreciate that. I wish you've. I, I wish you could have instead worded it like, "Do you think we are in the end of times?" Instead of telling me what I believe. That's that's a little toxic. Um, do I think we're in the end of times? My personal belief is that I will be able to live a full life before any potential massive apocalyptic event happens. Thus, I should just live my life towards trying to do good things for myself and others. And even if there was, let's say, an apocalyptic event to happen in 30 years, why should we not do the best we can to do good while we're here? Either way, we should step up and just be kind. Let's see if Rodrigo decides something. He could have left. Who knows? Is One Piece Church? What is One Piece Church? I, I don't know what that is. Balsamo. Hey, I'm not into religion that much, but do you think it's good? Thank you. I already read that. Hello, Marcus T.W. How art thou? I, I can understand why a lot of people think that I, I probably am, like, um, crazy. And, again, I can't, you know, from my perspective, I don't believe I'm crazy. I mean, there's definitely an issue because people that are crazy don't think they're crazy. But people that are not crazy, what people think are crazy, are sometimes not crazy. So, what determines if I end up being crazy from from an, from an outside perspective is going to come down to the actions that I take, as to if they hurt others or are seen as what would be seen as crazy. I may, I may have some actions which 
on the outside may, may be seen as crazy. I I acknowledge that by me posting these things on social media about like, oh, I went through all this pain, I finally moved, whatever. I acknowledge that's going to concern some people. And I actually, there's a piece of me that's like, eh, maybe I shouldn't post these things because it's going to cause some unrest. And it's the thing I still think about. And, and it's something that I want to be able to back down on. But it's like so difficult when you feel like you've been fighting for for yourself, for some level of truth your entire life. And there are some people that, that, that kind of held you back. And again, I see their perspective why they did that. It was care. And a lot of the times people held me back, I had to be held back. And if they not held me back and had the minds that they have, I'd be dead right now. So it's it's such a double edged sword to be like, but but still there's a piece of me that's like oh like I like like I hurt for so long, and this happened. Am I part of the LGBTQ community? I am not. I consider myself to be a 100% straight male, as in I have personally absolutely zero sexual attraction towards any sex that is not a woman. Yeah. So. I guess my privilege points are at the max. I mean, I gotta freaking use them well. So what I think about other religions, do you believe they're just wrong or what? I believe Christ for me is the truth. I do not necessarily believe that people in other religions are damned. The concept of damnation, even in Christianity, is disputed. Some say it simply, it means you go to hell forever. forever. Others mean, say it just means like you're annihilated, your soul is gone. I believe people should have the right to believe what they want. But if you have a belief that is problematic and you act upon that problematic belief, there still may be problems. I believe. The people who are the hardest to love are the ones who need to be loved the most. I believe the doctrines of many religions have an extraordinary amount of good and wisdom, but are partially outdated, and that partial outdatedness can hold us back to some extent. I believe every single human on this planet has problematic beliefs and ideals, including me. I believe there is not one single human on this planet that has everything figured out. However, I believe there are many humans on this planet that think that they have everything figured out. Do I plan to incorporate my beliefs into my future YouTube content? Yes. Well, here's here's how I'd say it. I, I have I have experienced a relationship with Jesus Christ slash God, and my entire life I was like, hey, I want to like like Christianity says, don't do these things, whatever. Like I, I was, I I want to do this goodness, but I'm scared to do it because I feel like the doctrine of Christianity in certain modern day outlooks and views of Christianity would prevent me from being able to do so. I felt guilty for being able to do so. With that being said, I go to a church in which you have so many humans who are so kind, so wonderful, these Christians that I go to church with, and they are truly loving. Um, with that being said, I believe that Christianity, certain belief systems and, and, and our potential in Christianity can be limited. My entire life, I didn't want to accept Jesus Christ because I felt like it would limit me because I didn't fully fall into certain things that I wanted, which were what I believe are good. And some of those things were good. Some of those things weren't good. And I had to learn from the things that weren't good and recognize, hey, that was a stupid idea. I'm sure I have plenty of stupid ideas that are not good. And I'll realize that they're not good and they're illogical. But when you look into the Bible, it's beautiful because... What it comes down to is if you believe in Christ, that is your salvation. And maybe I accept Jesus, but Jesus doesn't accept me. Who are you to say that Jesus doesn't accept me, Rodrigo? Who are you to tell me that Jesus doesn't accept me? 
How do, do you know that? How do you know that? Why, why do you have the right to tell me that Jesus doesn't accept me? I would never tell you that Jesus doesn't accept you. I believe in him entirely. I believe and have full faith in Jesus Christ. And in the Bible it says, whoever shall believe with him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you disagree with your own Bible that you claim to speak, to be, to agree with? Have you kept in contact with people you've collaborated with in the past? Like Spawn and Troy? By the way, I went on a tangent in a second ago, and I, I was almost at the end of it, and I kind of stopped, but I forgot where I was going. If anyone wants to remind me, I'd love to finish it, but I, I don't. If you could remind me where I was, if you if I didn't finish whatever thought you may, or question you may have had on it. Rodrigo, why do you think that Jesus doesn't love me or accept me? What What do you think I've done that would make Jesus not love or accept me? What belief do I have that you believe is problematic in a sense where Jesus shouldn't love me or accept me? For if you could answer that and we could have a discussion about it, I'd love to discuss it. But you're going to have to be a little bit more specific for me to take into consideration the words you're saying compared to you just coming in here and be like, maybe you accept Jesus, but Jesus doesn't accept you. It's like, well, that's, that's, kind, of, that's kind of unkind. Have you kept in contact with creators you've collaborated with in the past? Like Small and Troy. A little bit, but I haven't spoken to them anytime soon, so not, not really, I would say no. What do you say to people who think you are crazy? I would say I understand. And I would say that if I was in their shoes, I would think the exact same thing. And it's difficult because I need to do me. And I am aware that it's going to worry people. But the way I see it is over the coming months as I live my life and I do certain things and prove to people that, hey, I'm, I'm actually good. I'm okay. There's nothing to worry about here. They'll be able to see, oh, okay, Harry's okay. We don't have to worry about him. And from the highest moral standard, if I was to truly do that, I wouldn't be posting the things on social media. I wouldn't be posting the things that worry people. And... I recognize that that's a mistake that I'm making and I do think about it and I accept whatever consequences may come. I accept whatever consequences may come from doing so and it's definitely a trade-off. I feel like I need to do it to like say to the world, you cannot simply, like, like I, I, I need to make my own decisions. And I mean that entirely. I will make my decisions, and I'm sure I will stumble and fail. And when I stumble and fail, that is entirely on me. So I take responsibility for my actions to the fullest extent. And whatever mistakes I make, that they're on me. Harry, I think you're brave to open yourself up in a way like this. See you in DMs for more in-depth con combo about your church life. Um, okay, Nicole, I shall totally message you. Thoughts about the small ant versus point crow situation? I do not know much about that. If it's recent, I haven't been keeping track. And I also don't like to um, participate in gossip when I can avoid it or things that I have no knowledge or, or, or ability to speak upon. So... That is what I'll say on that. <laughs> Hello, John. How are you? John Rahill. Epic profile. <laughs> what? John, what are you holding in your profile picture? What the fudge is that? I don't know. Later, Toby. Good boss. What is good boss? I don't know what good boss is. Apple juice. Oh, good Bob. Dude, I love apple juice. How would you describe what is different from what you're going now in comparison to your manic episodes in the past? Um, I feel connected to God. And I have the ability to fully be myself without fear. With that being said, I'm still fearful of making stupid decisions. <laughs> so, 
I can be myself, but also I can also still make stupid decisions that are problematic. So I that's that's kind of what I fear is making dumb decisions, which I make and then I have to learn from. And I acknowledge that I've I've already made some dumb decisions today. Jesus just called me via WhatsApp and told me to tell you to take your meds. You know, Rodrigo, it does say in the Bible the importance of not lying. And I personally am not going to listen. I'm not going to agree with what you said. I, I just, I'm simply going to do what I, what I wish. I don't need to listen to you. And maybe you're right. Maybe Jesus did call you on WhatsApp and tell me to take your meds, in which case I'm, I'm going to not listen. However, if it's the case that you just lied about Jesus calling you on WhatsApp, which I don't know for sure. Only you know. You know if you lied or not about that. And that's very problematic that you consider yourself to follow the Bible and you literally just lied about the book that you claim to speak about and you claim to have a connection to Jesus no, and so no much about. No, so much about. But I cannot tell you that you lied. I do not know that. I acknowledge there is a possibility. And if you did not lie about that, then wonderful. Um, if Jesus wants me to take my meds, he can tell me himself, not through you. But yeah, I, I don't. I don't know if you lied. Maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. I, I can't tell you. Only you know that. Apple juice is superior to orange juice. Ooh, that's a tough question. What's superior, apple juice or orange juice? I'm actually. I think I'm more of an orange juice type of guy. You're his messenger. Well, Rodrigo, there's no way that I can know if you are his messenger or not. Right now, based off of the experiences that I've seen and the way that you're acting in the stream and the Christ that I have a connection with, I'm not saying you don't have a connection to Christ, but I'm saying I, I, I personally do not believe that the things that you're speaking are something that would be spoken to you through Christ. So... As of right now, I'm going to not listen to the words that you're saying or, or not use them to guide my life or dictate it in any way. But I gotta say, I'm happy you're back in your channel. You're my childhood. Even people think you're crazy. This isn't sometime, something bad. Being a Christian isn't always a good moral path. What do you mean by that? Being a Christian isn't always a good moral path. What does that mean, Nathan? Please, please go further into depth on that. I, I very much want to hear what you have to say about that. As that, you have truly sparked my interest with that statement. To, an, to a very large extent. Orange better till 2 p.m. There's there's some truth to that. I would say apple juice is definitely better at later in the day, I think. But I think orange juice is still... Oh, fuck, wait! John, you're actually speaking... Wait, wait, wait. I can't, I, I'm not going to agree with it, like, exactly. But... I, I see what you're on to. Do I reckon Jesus has played Odyssey? I do not know. I do not know. <laughs> Judas was OP for real. Uh, can you enlighten me on who Judas was and what he did? And uh, I, I do not, I have not read that part of the Bible. If you would like, if not, that is totally fine. Good, goodbye, Harry. I have to read my book. Goodbye, Creeper. I wish you the best. Here have I been? I've been wonderful. How are you? Spitzkopf, Max Luca. <laughs> Thoughts on peach flavored milk? Never had it. Very interesting concept. Would Jesus be a boob guy or an ass guy? I. Again, I can't speak for Jesus. According to how we how he is dictated depicted in the bible he wouldn't he wouldn't what's the word i don't think he would have be either as i don't think he lusted for women or at least not like that and last time i remember seeing you was on twitch ordering a bizarre domino's pizza while streaming odyssey bit a minute shut your ball that was a long time ago but you don't know judas and claim to be religious I don't know if I've claimed to be religious. I, I probably have. 
at this point, I shall change that. I do not, I don't think I am a religious person. I do not claim to be a religious person. I claim to be a person, a follower of Christ. And somebody who has accepted Christ. I do not claim to be religious. I have looked into various elements of different religions, however. Remember that is that you spread a good message. Most people think that maybe this is like a manic state, and people associate those states as sometimes maybe dangerous for yourself, the people of your life. No, you're right, you're right. I understand their concern, and again, it's tough. Could he be asexual? I would lean towards the idea that Jesus was asexual if you had to label it like that. Um, that's what I would say. The Christian path is most of the time a living path. Interesting statement. Jesus is ace king. Dang, true. <laughs> Yo, I never thought about that, bro. Jesus, like, dude, all these... You think people that are asexual be like, oh my gosh, Jesus, the freaking man. The ace, the, the OG asexual, right? Last time we saw mine was Club Penguin. Is citrus milk or orange milk a crime to the world? I don't know what that is. Jesus, is it... No, I'm not going to read that. Can't even read that out loud. That feels kind of blasphemous. Best Mario Odyssey world. Best Sand Kingdom, in my opinion. You think Jesus would be sad with the world today? I could see that. But I think with that being said, it's easy to be like, oh my gosh, Jesus is sad in the world. And that's probably true to a pretty large extent. But let us also remember, especially if you're a follower of Christ, not in a guilty way, but in, in, a, in a positive, how can we grow type of way, what are the ways in which Jesus might be sad with us, with what we're doing, with our decisions that we're making? And let's start by, doing, by making decisions that we can to, to be more showing of the unconditional love that he stood for. Sand is goaded. Sand is goaded. I would agree with that. Sand kingdom, what a beautiful kingdom. Remember, there are good people, and you can be part of it. I'm trying to understand what you mean by that statement, spits cough. I don't understand the statement. Do I still like to be called fearsome fire? Call me for some fire if you'd like. Thank you, Spitzkopf. I think there's a problem that arises because I read I read what you said. Remember, there are good people and you can be part of it. When you, I, for me, I believe that there are good people of all religions, and whilst I believe that Christ is the truth, I don't think that everybody who is a Christian is necessarily a good person. And I don't believe that everybody who is not a Christian is necessarily a bad person. I think there exists good people all across the world. How'd I come up with the name Fearsome Fire? I just kind of thought of it. it. took a long time to think of, though. I really had to think and try to think of something cool. Hey, man, here's with love. Thank you, Germanville. Much love to you. Much love to you, Grayson. What do you think of Islam? Christians and Muslims share a lot of beliefs, yet disagree on a few. So I've only, I, I have read like only like, I, I'm not going to put a number, like anywhere from five to 20 pages of the Quran. That's, that's how small it is. Can I say that confidently? I can't even say that confidently. Because I read the Quran on my phone. I also read like a couple pages. And I've, said, I've definitely read at least five. So, so yes. <sighs> I'm pretty sure I've read at least five. I'm like mostly sure. How about that? So I've read those small parts of the Quran. And... Meaning I'm completely ignorant on the subject. I have very little understanding. My old roommate was Muslim. And I was able to learn a little bit about the idea of Islam. 
Um, for me, the idea that there is only one God was a very, like, captivating idea to me. It was very captivating. Which, like, the, the idea that, like, oh, there's just one God. How could Christ also, like, be God, whatever. And that kind of led me on that path. And, and I, I actually spent, like, two days praying to Mecca. And that was interesting. And then I got led down a different road. Here's what I would say. I don't know all, all the understandings of God, right? What I know for God is that he has guided me without a doubt to believe in Jesus Christ, my only Lord and Savior. And I believe that believing in Jesus Christ, my only Lord and Savior, and being a truly good person would equate to some pretty wonderful things happening within one's life, if you can get through the hardship. There may be times where certain beliefs of how we look at Christianity could conflate in a negative light of what it may mean to be a more good person. Um, and I don't necessarily believe that people that don't believe in Jesus are damned. I think that God is all powerful and he can pull some pretty amazing strings, but I would say it's a lot easier for God to, to bring you to a good place. If you just believe in his son, as that's, that's kind of like, he's like, yo, here you go. Please do this please guys. And then it's like, understandably so we've, we've may have strayed in certain ways, still are still figuring things out. I'm figuring things out. And I think that you'll be in a good spot if you believe in Christ and you live towards him, you let him transform you. And it's like, GG, like you made job, you made God's life way easier. And to those that are good people and die without Christ, I don't necessarily believe that they're ripped, but I do believe that it is way more difficult for God to not let them be quote unquote ripped. With that being said, why I'm, what I am speaking of right now is simply my own perspective at this point in my life. And I acknowledge that it is a belief and I could very well be wrong about it. With that being said, I'm fortunate as to while I do have to consider empathy for the rest of the world and the validity of these claims that of these potential ideals that I'm bringing up as at this point in my life, all I can do now that I know that I have my truth for me is understand that I have Christ. I have a connection to him and stood for many of the things that he stood for in the name of unconditional love and truly giving others the, the love and kindness. And that's a battle. It's difficult to truly love others and be kind and, and show some level of unconditional love. And some people you have to do so in very complicated ways. And, and we all have different opinions on what the best way is to do that. And I think it's going to be a lifelong struggle to do so. And it's going to be a lifelong of, of learning. It's going to be a life of studying what it means to be moral, what it means to live with virtue. When there are times to stand up for what is wrong and how to, in the best manner to do that, and when to help others and recognizing what you can realistically do in the moment. I think that life is extraordinarily complex. I think that being moral is extraordinarily complex. I think that being good is extraordinarily complex. And that's a big part as to why we suffer because we all have the desire to be good. And, and deep down in our core, I believe most humans have that but it can be very confusing. And, and we are all in a struggle to understand what is truly the best way to be good. When to listen to the things that were brought upon us, maybe in our childhood, from our society, from our friends, and when to look elsewhere for those ideals, even if they may be in places that we didn't necessarily entirely agree with all the time. We also need to be able to look elsewhere for those ideals and recognize I don't agree with those ideals that are elsewhere, but we cannot, in my opinion, throw away all the goodness of all the people and ideals and, 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 and beliefs in the world. We need to look at each one individually and take the good that exists within each one and throw out the bad. And we're not going to be able to entirely agree on the best process in doing that, but I think that it's important that we each do that for ourselves to 
make our lives better and make the lives of the people around us better. What I meant to say is that there are good people in the world doing good things in the world, and everyone can be part of the people who do good things and spread positivity. I agree with you, Spitzkopf. How do I? I mostly agree with you. How about that? I think. Where do you stand on the concept of free will? I don't think I know for 100% certainty if we have free will, but I believe we do. To a solid extent, I believe we have free will. I hear my family in the back. Do I think we'll witness the life of the Antichrist and keep in mind that the Bible states that he will first act as a new Messiah? Um, I don't believe within our lifetimes we will see that. I do not know that, however. But I do not believe within our lifetimes we will see that. Do I believe in the Big Bang or evolution? I am unsure. And I don't think that it's important to my life. Do you think we'll witness a good person everybody looks up to turn into evil like the Antichrist? I don't know. I do not know that. Neither. I have no idea. Uh, I, I couldn't know something like that. When is God coming? I do not know. I don't entirely understand what that means either. What do you mean, when is God coming? If God is able to see what will happen in the future, and he can tell you what will happen in the next decade, what do you think the earth, when do you think the earth will meet his end? Once again, I do not know. I do not think it is a thing that I need to focus on. I don't think it is healthy for me personally to focus on that. I think what is healthy for me to focus on is spreading goodness, love, and kindness. And the things that are outside of my control, I cannot control, and I'm not going to ruminate over. Any advice on where to draw the lines on certain things, such as music? Can you go a little bit more in depth on that question, Cohen? Am I familiar with Andrew Tate? If so, how do you feel about the dangerous method he is feeding to our vulnerable youth? I think Andrew Tate is extraordinarily dangerous in the method, in the message that he is feeding. I think he is solely responsible for corrupting further the minds of many, many young men that live within a generation who are constantly seeking some sort of guidance and are very lost. And I think that he is leading them down a very, very serious and problematic path. And I, I believe that we can all, all of us who are not Andrew Tate should be very happy that we are not that man because whether that man get, has life hit him in the face in this lifetime or the next, I don't think it would be pretty for him. That man speaks as if every so everybody in, so, in society is slaves. Everybody in, in the world needs, like, nobody has full control. None of us are gods, okay? None of us, none of us are, are we, we all have to be in part of some system, right? He speaks as if he's broken free of some sort of system. Yet the man is, and, and says that he's not a slave, he's not controlled by anything. Yet if you watch him, you'll quickly see that the man is absolutely entirely enslaved to his pride, to the largest extent possible. He is, the decisions he, he makes are entirely based off of his pride. That man has less free will and ability than most. And that pride is causing so much pain in this world. And it's very, very unfortunate and it's hard to see. And I would love to be able to speak up against it at some point. I don't, you know, I, I am right now. And it's just unfortunate, but I do, I'm, I'm an optimist. And I believe that things are going to get better and we're moving forward in the right direction. Or, or I believe things are going to happen. Everybody suffers hardship in life. Everybody goes down wrong paths. Some have it way, way worse than others. Some are way less privileged than others. And some of them, unfortunately, lead... To really bad places. I believe people that have true evil, bad, ill intent and are unwilling to learn from their mistakes over a long enough period of time, I would simply say I am grateful to not be one of those people. As to what happens to them exactly, I do not know, I cannot say, and is not something I shall speak upon.
Complicated question. Do you think that being consequent or being harsh at times to bring others back to the right path is okay? That is way too vague of a question for me to ever answer. I would need for you to give me a specific example. I don't play no games unless we talk in M&M's kart race. I don't play no games unless we talk in Fortnite. Finally knew I made it when I said another room. Are you watching the Pokemon presentation tomorrow? I do not intend on doing so. Wait, John Rilson request to be in your live video? No way! How do I accept this? John, I want to talk to you, my friend. Gosh dang it. Like, as a Christian, where do you draw the line on exposing yourself or meditating on things that are outside of the Christian worldview? Me personally, I'll just speak on what I do as at this point in my life. I listen to modern day Christian songs. And I also listen, listen to positive songs. As of right now, I have not found myself listening to any sad songs. I think that sad songs make sense on certain occasions, but I think they can be very dangerous to listen to sad music. And I think that people can get very caught up with sad music. I think if you make a serious mistake and you have a lot of shame, guilt, and, and, and you really feel bad about it and you want to be better, and you're just like laying in bed and you're like, oh my gosh, I fucked up. And you can listen to a sad song and you can like feel that shittiness and relate to somebody else who's also felt just like they really made a mistake in life. I think that's a beautiful and amazing time to actually listen to sad music. I think it's a necessary time to do so. But I think it can be easy to get caught up in sadness in that sad music. And it can be dangerous. And I think one should be careful. But like I said, me myself, I listen to very positive music. I listen to modern day Christian music. And I listen to music that from like a vibe, like happiness level is more of classic within the past 50 years, popular music, the ones that did really well, that may be deeper in some sense and are not necessarily entirely positive or negative. Nice beard, thanks. <laughs> this is a beard. <laughs> this is a beard, okay. kind of waiting for questions I, I, I mean I could I don't really speak about it on my own I can become very hesitant towards or I, I've become more hesitant towards speaking about myself without reason which is pretty difficult if you're trying to be a YouTuber or streamer because you're supposed to be speaking of yourself. Do I like Breaking Bad? I watched the first three seasons of Breaking Bad, I believe. Meaning, I definitely watched the first two, and then I don't know exactly where I ended, if it was on the third or fourth season. The show got boring for me. I thought it was good, but I don't know. I wasn't able to keep watching it. Sandwich. It's a good sandwich. If someone is mean or abusive to you or others, or if they have a dam genuinely damaging attitude... Is it okay to be harsh or direct towards them back? Mean or abusive to you or others? That's not specific enough. I can't answer on that. Like, you need to, you, again, you'd have to be more specific for me to answer upon something like that. Opinions on Harry Potter. I watched Harry Potter. And... I liked Harry Potter. I do like Harry Potter. It's a good movie. Or a good set of movies. Um, very captivating. Went very wondrous. Um, it does have some dark themes. I could see how those dark themes could be potentially dangerous. 
but I would say I would say Harry Potter as a whole in society has done more good than bad. I believe it's inspired people to fight up for what is good, to look up to somebody like Harry Potter in the movie along with his friends, to be courageous. It's allowed people to be imaginative about you know, beautiful, captivating ideas like magic, even if they may not exactly exist within this planet, on this world. I'm a believer that through Christ in the next life, many of those ideals of, of what could be conflated towards magic, what are magical towards through God, are very real. And that's a wonderful thing to be able to imagine, to think that, hey, in heaven, you know, why not have a magic wand or do things like that under God, under Jesus Christ? That's a, that's a beautiful thing to think of. And even if you don't believe in God, so long as it doesn't get dangerous, that's, a, that's an amazing, fun idea to, to think about. And I think that the, the movies were very well made, and it's a wonderful story. Um, again, Spitzkopf, you need to be more specific. Like, you got to be specific, my guy. I cannot answer you. This is way, way, way too vague. Like, you're like, hey, if this guy does a bad thing to me, can I be bad to him? Well, like, what does it even mean? Like, that is so extraordinarily vague. And I can, I, I refuse to speak upon something that is that big. I'm sorry, my friend. Favorite song slash artist right now. My favorite song right now is... Is Let the Light In by Joshua Micah, I believe, and Owl City. That is my favorite song right now. How's my finger? It is... I don't know. Be vibing. Be vibing, I guess. I can't, this is all I can move. Well, I can move like this and like this. I've accepted it. <laughs> it's, it's not a problem. Part of my scars, you know. I've also accepted I have... I, there was a point in my life during the stuff that I went through where I self-harmed. And they've pretty much faded as much as they will. And at first, I was, like, really, like, I was ashamed of it. But now I'm actually kind of happy that I have them. Because I hope to really grow as a human. And I hope to, you know, just having self-harm scars will show people that also have gone through such the horrible thing is that self-harm is. They're like, hey, like, here's a guy that, you know, can, can do goodness and, or, or you know... And was able to, you know, grow past it. And I hope to be an inspiration in that aspect. So I'm actually, I know this is going to sound insane. I don't know if gratitude is the right word, but I've, I'm very much accepting of it. And, and will carry the, the scars with me till the day I die. I intend on doing so. I'm going to take my cat to the vet in 15 because he's having trouble walking. All right. Thank you for coming, Clayton. Where'd I get the necklace? Off of Amazon. It's a nice one. Thank you, by the way. Communication labor now? I want to take the comic back. You don't, don't feel bad about it, dude. I, I just, I mean, if, you know, I, I just said, like, it's just so, like, what I've learned is life is so complicated, and we love to make, like, oh, it's very easy to make super big generalizations about what to do in certain circumstances or ideals. And what it comes down to is, is learning to be able to have the strength and, and ability and foresight and knowledge and wisdom to take each situation that we find ourselves in differently and uniquely and respond in the best way possible. And that's something that is, is it takes a lifetime to develop that. And it's something that we, that, that is a, an ongoing process. Um, but I've learned that, and that's why I've become very wary to speak on such a broad, you know, a broad thing that you said. And it'd be really nice if we could be like, all right, you know, if this guy does this, like if he treats me and I feel like he, like he did this to me, then I get to respond like this. And it's like, it'd be so much easier if we could just be like, that's like, boom, fact, easy in our head. That's how we're going to like respond to this world whenever this situ situation that fits that mold of what that idea would be happens. But the unfortunate part about it is life is very much more complicated than that, I believe. And it comes down to learning each individual situ situation and all the different circumstances that encompass each situation. As there are times in life to, to stand up for yourself and there are times to back down. 
and it's a process to learn when those times are. You know, the the classical idea of, of you know, that, that many men use within their marriages, you know, pick your battles, choose your battles, which ones make sense and which ones don't. Um, that can be applied to just communication with people that we see within our daily lives, I believe. Anybody have questions about my life? Anybody want to talk about their life? I'm like, on the end, I don't want to eat into the crust. I'm just trying to get as much out of the little bit that exists in the middle as possible. How am I? I'm blessed to say that I'm truly wonderful. Absolutely blessed to be able to say that. Opinions on McDonald's. I like McDonald's. Opinions on dark humor? Too vague for me. Too vague of a question. I'm sorry. I love the filet of fish. Me too. Do you think love can ruin someone's life? No. What I do believe is there are many people who ruin people's lives in the name of love. But what they're doing is not true love. True love? I don't think that can ruin anybody's life. And it's like sports. Do I agree with that statement that you said? Um, I don't have an opinion. Old me's or new me's? I prefer the old me's. And I say that with hesitance. They don't even know that entirely. The new me's are cool too. It's hard for me to pick one or the other, but I lean towards old me's. I don't know if you guys can hear my siblings in the background being all loud. Pog boys. Ruby Pig 16. Did I listen to metal music? Not often. I have not listened to metal music recently. Oh, do I like metal music? It's too big. Can't answer that. No offense. Everything old there. What does that mean, Spitzkopf? Do you listen to Boy With Yuki? Yes! Not too much of him. Only a couple of his songs. His, like, popular ones. But his popular songs are fire. Like, I, I like the songs. The songs can be a little bit toxic. Like, his song Toxic is kind of toxic. He's like... All my friends are toxic. Oh, like the statement, all my friends are toxic is a toxic statement. Is it not? Is there anything wrong with that? No. There are plenty of times in my life where I've been like, yeah, all my friends are toxic. So like, I freaking get it, my guy. Like, I don't, you know, I think that's needed for many people. Sometimes you need to be toxic under the right circumstances in life. But be very wary when you decide to be toxic. Be very wary. That's all I would say. It should not be the norm it should be the exception but i do believe there are certain circumstances in life where you may have to be what many would consider toxic to get you through a certain important barrier that you may face in life but be extraordinarily careful because it's easy to get lost in the toxicity true toxic i mean it, 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 it's, it's it's again just it's just being careful i mean it's like it's like it's just life is just, Life is complicated, guys. But hey, we're lucky. The people watching this, we're lucky we're young, right? We got so much time to learn. And that's that's a, just a blessing. How lucky are we? Local Ginger Boy finds Instagram live. It says I have 31 seconds remaining. Am I, do I just not have enough people watching and it has to end it automatically in 25 seconds? I guess I just say bye, guys.